Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about winter time and the fact that, yes, indeed, winter is coming. And you can see that I am wearing my hoodie because it's cold in my house. Well, it's not cold. It's just a little bit cool. And I've been working really hard the last three or four days driving to Vancouver Island, which is about a five hour drive to the ferry, an hour and 40, and then the other side of the ferry. And I learned that my friend Tim lives a long way from the ferry in Sydney, where my where my house is. So all the best to everybody. Hope that you're shifting into winter. You are thinking about uh, getting a tune up on your vehicle. You're thinking about winter tires if you need those for those of us who live in the north and actually have snow. So what I want to uh, ask people is, just get the thing off there is okay first of all where are you from what vehicle are you driving and are you preparing for a road test hello style how are you uh so leave that information those of you who were watching this on the replay as well tell me what class of license you're going for what uh, vehicle you're driving and how far off is your road test and what challenges are you having Ashimer bought your first car. That's awesome. What kind of car do you have, Ashimer, that you purchased? Peaches, hi there. Welcome to the live stream. That's really great. Uh, one of the things I'm working on is uh, on the way down. When was it? Wednesday, Wednesday night? Yeah, it was Wednesday night uh, that I drove down to Vancouver Island. I drove through some of the most torrential rain that I've ever driven through probably for my entire driving career, even when I was driving truck and whatnot. And it was dark <laughs> it was pouring rain and i can count on one hand probably the number of times um that i put the windshield wipers in my vehicle on high and this was one of the few times in my lifetime of driving that i actually put the windshield wipers on high it was raining that hard uh charlene hi there how are you uh what are you working for uh what are you working towards uh yes bricks for wheels uh cory it is winter time <laughs> yes and there's there's snow there's been snow in the mountains uh yum yum <laughs> ss yum yums no you cannot play pokemon while you're driving that's called distracted driving and it, it's the recent thing uh toyota camry xle from 2014 uh yeah that's a great car solid car uh do you like it do you like driving that car ashmer uh I'll be driving a crossover and we'll be preparing for my test in November. That's awesome style. Uh, so you haven't actually started driving yet. Um, your vehicle style. Uh, <laughs> no way will I be able to park that on my test. Yes, you will. Uh, Washington, you're from Was uh, Washington. You're driving a Mazda. IOTKU. <laughs> that's great backed up without crashing that's that's always good when you can back up without crashing so yeah uh so what i'm working on uh when i was going down i got some footage some dash cam video on raining and i got a video together it's all shot i just gotta edit it and crunch it for driving the other thing i did today when i came back my good friend bill walker who i did one of my first videos actually uh three years ago uh while i was still learning <laughs> uh, how to do videos and whatnot uh, bill and i did a video because i trained bill three years ago and uh to be a truck driver actually and bill left the driving school on thursday and then uh was working in the oil patch in grand prairie alberta on the next tuesday and I caught up with Bill about a year after that. We did a couple of uh, interviews and a uh, question on how to find a job and whatnot. So Bill and I did another video. Uh, Bill retired about six months ago. And six months ago, <laughs> I didn't really want to do the inter with, interview with Bill at that point because Bill was still pretty tired at that point and he was a bit grumpy. So I just let him catch up on his sleep. And so today we did that interview it looks really good in the raw footage and I'm gonna edit that video and I'll get that up again as well for this week if anybody's considering a career uh, you know not just driving a truck but working in the oil patch and those types of things so uh, yeah so I'm gonna get that up as well it's a really good video uh, you know lots of b-roll and good footage of trucks and ditches and those sorts of things and doing things with trucks you shouldn't be doing so um, 
Bricks for Wheels. Yes, the networking video. That's Bill Walker. Uh, just a really affable guy. Just really nice to talk to and really lots of great information. SS Yum Yum, should I be, should I back up by looking back in my head or should I use my mirrors? Uh, for the purposes of your test Yum Yums, you have to look, uh, put your uh, right hand on the back of the passenger seat and then look through the back window. That's how you do it. Now you can use your mirrors a little bit, but for the most part, you need to be looking out the back window uh, when you're, um, when you're backing up for the purposes of preparing for your road test. Sam is here, Jericho uh, uh, Royo. Yeah, that's Sam. Sam has a driving school. He works for driving school in the Bronx in New York. Uh, Rookie Auto Driving School. So you can ask Sam questions as well. Uh, Ashmer, the brakes are very soft and the throttle and steering are sensitive. So when you say Ashmer, the brakes are soft, when you push down on the pedal, do you have to continue to push down on the pedal quite hard to get the brakes to react? Because um, I don't know whether you've done this or not. You may have already checked the brake fluid in the master cylinder. See whether you're full of brake fluid. That's one of the things I want to do. Uh, Fiona, do we use special wheels in the wintertime? So are, are they are expensive. Um, oh, sorry. Flona. My apologies. I called you Fiona. I didn't. I thought it was an I, but it's an L. Uh, yes. If you are driving in snow, you really should have winter tires on your vehicle. So, uh, and those unfortunately are expensive. They can be about a thousand dollars for a set of four. So yes, Lewis, after placing to winter tires, steering wheel wiggle around three centimeters left and right. Okay. Lewis, did you get your wheels balanced when you had them put on the vehicle or did you just mount them onto the vehicle? That's a question. Alicia. I passed my road test a month ago. I'm still not confident doing lane changes. Yes, Alicia, what I'm going to do, somebody asked me to do a video on uh, how the other vehicles look in the mirror. And actually, I think that's going to be valuable, valuable information because I was thinking about that while I was driving back today from Vancouver Island, uh, where the vehicles are in not only the center mirror, but the outside mirror. And you should be able to see the whole front end of the vehicle in the center mirror and in the wing mirror on the right side. It should be in the upper outside corner of the mirror, the entire front end of that vehicle there. And that usually indicates that there's enough space for you to change lanes and move over. There you go. Uh, yes, Corey has found the video for you, Yum Yums, about backing up. Yes, and always look in the direction your car is going. <laughs> that's great advice from Sam. Exactly. The car will go where you're looking, so that's that's important. Uh, style, do you have to use the mirrors when backing up while parallel parking or also look through the back window? Uh, style, you want to be looking through the back window. You also want to be looking in the mirrors, but for the most part, you want to be doing a lot of scanning while you're backing up. I mean, most of it's going to be out through the back window. But you do want to be checking your mirrors and doing 360 degree scan because the environment around you or the traffic situation can change a lot. So you, for the most part, you want to be looking back, but do what you can. OK. Yes, style. I'm going to I've there is a couple lane changing videos here. Uh, there's a playlist about how to change lanes, but I can do another one that will specifically focus on the mirrors and what you're looking for in the mirrors is what I'll do. Yeah, Ashimer, why is car insurance so expensive for teenage boys? Uh, unfortunately, that's a reality that's been the same since I was a teenager. It's just expensive because they have statistics to show that young males are at a higher uh, crash rate. And actually, most teens are at a higher rate and females are beginning to come online with the similar number of crashes that young te young male teens have as well. And one of the reasons why the crash rate is so high for teens is because, in my opinion, they come into the three Ds at the same time. Drinking, driving, and dating. Those three things all come to the fore at exactly the same time. And now we have distracted driving with phones, which just adds a fourth D to the three Ds already in place. You don't have any experience with drinking, you don't have any experience with driving, and you don't have any experience with dating. And all of those three, three things come to a confluence come together at the same place and time and myself and other experts have advocated that we, we we separate one of those things out. Drinking, for example, why can't we start drinking at 16 instead of drinking at 19 when we get a license and we start dating? That way you have some experience with it before you actually get to the other two things. So that's one of the reasons why I'm, my professional opinion is, is that why 
young teens have such a high crash rate that in combination with a few other things that i've talked about before in terms of uh, the inability that they don't have a lexicon of uh, hazard perception so unfortunately i'm sorry that's why your insurance is so high all right uh lewis yes it was balanced at canadian tire we'll have to recheck thanks it does not wiggle when at 80. yeah but you don't want to do 80 all the time do you lewis <laughs> uh you could have something else you could have a wheel alignment uh might be an issue as well so you might want to get that checked uh yum yums is it bad that i take my seat doll off before i re reverse because my are worn yeah uh yum yums don't take your seatbelt off when you're backing up on a road test okay you can do it and according to the legislation you can do it but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should and especially on a road test because most driving examiners do not know the legislation and if you take your seatbelt off uh, when you're backing up on a road test and I retract that from the video that I made uh, they're going to get excited about that I'll just stick the comments up here uh, here we go so everybody can see them there we go Forgot to do that. Uh, Bean Towns, your videos helped me tremendously as a new driver. Could you please do a video on highway driving? I would love some help with switching lanes and distance and those types of things. Yeah, Bean Towns, I'll I'll do that as well because right? I know it's a bit different when it's at high speeds. Uh, Charlene, my husband passed the road test because of you. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. I'm really great that it the information was able to help. Uh, him be successful on his road test miss might hi i'm going for my test soon do i press the gas to reverse on the test or just let the car go on its own at five miles an hour it depends a little bit miss might you might need to give it a little bit of throttle to back up but you'll just need to sort of practice that in and around the area and the other thing i would suggest is to, on the weekend or when the office hours are closed at the testing center where you're going to be taking your test uh, go in and practice backing up into the stall that way you'll know whether it's a bit of an incline up or not and that way you'll be able to get used to the throttle and whatnot before you actually go there for your road test uh da -da -da, where'd we go Corey, yum yums legislation that so it's fine but don't do it for the road test yeah exactly uh style is it true that good grades will give me cheaper insurance uh, where are you style are you in the in North America I mean that might be true I don't know for a fact Sam might be able to comment on that uh, whether your scholastic grades your school your grades in school have an impact on whether you get good insurance or, or whatnot <clears throat> don't plan to yet <Yeah>, style <laughs> that's probably a good thing not to drink especially for the first few years of driving learning how to drive yeah that's a good Good thing. Ella Chow, I am still having a hard time making turns. Why? Uh, because, L, what you need to do is you need to go out and get some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons, rent some of those from your local uh, rental shop, go to a parking lot and practice with cones, doing forward stops, backward stops, backing up around the, cur the cones and those types of things in a similar two point reverse turn. Uh, you need to drive around in figure eights and you need to do reverse figure eights. When you figure out space and place of the vehicle, that is going to improve your overall turns as well. You need to get to the proper speed before you execute the turn. Uh, right turns, for example, you need to slow to approximately 10 to 12 kilometers an hour, 8 to 10 miles an hour. And for left hand turns, it's 50 to 15 to 20 to 30 kilometers an hour or sort of 12 to 18 miles an hour depending on the configuration of the corner and you need to look where you want to go so that will help you with your turns uh peaches when you're driving how do you remember which pedal is the brake or the gas okay peaches are you driving automatic or you're driving a manual i suspect you're driving an automatic just answer that for me Ashimer, uh, unfortunately car insurance is probably not going to get cheaper for you until after you're 25 years old Aya Bear, is it difficult getting your class one driver's license? Uh, no, it's not really difficult. I would suggest that you go to a driving school though because there is a, a fair bit of technical information that you need in order to pass a road test because you have to take an air brakes course. Uh, and the five components of a class one driver training course are turning, shifting, pre-trip inspection, backing, coupling, so hooking and unhooking the trailer. Or a class one license turning is the most important aspect because if you do it wrong and you pull a 
tire up over a curb or whatnot, uh, you could run over a pedestrian, you could pull the trailer up over the hood of somebody's car. And let me tell you, when you pull the hood of the, the, the trailer tires up over the hood of somebody's car, wow, they get excited. <laughs> they come out of that car and they're screaming and yelling. So yeah, so turning is the most important. Unfortunately, on a class one uh, driver training program, the most difficult part for most students is learning how to shift a crash box. If you're here in North America, that is fairly challenging for a lot of students. So know that. And then the third biggest component is your pre-trip inspection. And for the first few times that you see it, it looks very technical and very complicated, but there's a lot of repetition in it. And after you do it three or four times, you can start doing it on your own. So those are the three major components of a class one pre um, class one driver training program is turning, shifting, pre-trip inspection. And then you've got the two minor ones, which is backing and backing will depend on the licensing center where you go. All right. So, uh, automatic peaches automatic. So what I suggest to you, uh, uh, peaches as well, if it wasn't, I think it was you that I suggested it to was to go and work with those 36 inch meter, one tall pot, um, top, one meter tall pylons in the parking lot, sorry, and do the forward reverse, the figure eights and those types of things and all of that will help you with the pedals and whatnot. That'll improve your overall driving, okay? And then work on your slow speed maneuvers. Corey, working on winter tires, what happens if a parking brake freezes? Uh, well, unfortunately, you gotta get it unfrozen, Corey. <laughs> and because it's a cable that runs to the back, oftentimes what happens is, is that the brake shoes get wet inside the rear tires if it's it might be disc brakes if it's a newer vehicle but most of the time it's shoes which is a brake pad like this and it goes out against the drum and they freeze to the drum or some components do and you got to heat it up somehow to get it unfrozen uh you might even need to take it to a mechanic yeah sam said keep your seat belt on at all times for the purposes of a road test okay just don't do it i mean after you get your license yeah you can take your seat belt off to back up the problem with new drivers on a road test is, is that you're so nervous during the road test that if you take your seatbelt off, oftentimes you'll forget to put it back on. Or, as we were talking about last week with Sam, is that a lot of these driving examiners do not know the rules, regulations, and legislation. They simply don't. So if you take your seatbelt off, you're just going to freak them out. <laughs> That's the last thing you want on a road test is a freaked out driving examiner. Okay, so just don't do it. Uh, Flana, I have been practicing drinking for more than 40 hours, but I still do drinking or driving. <laughs> I still make mistakes. How many hours do you recommend for new drivers before taking the test? Uh, Flana, one of the things you need to know about taking a road test is the road test doesn't have to have to be perfect. You're allowed a certain amount of demerits. You're allowed a certain amount of mistakes. So it doesn't have to be perfect. All you have to do is go for pass not perfect okay so as long as you're doing most of it right most of it okay then i would recommend that you take uh, then you take your book your road test however the other thing that i recommend to all students taking a road test is go and book some time with a local driving school and you may need to book this two or three weeks out and do a mock road test because driving instructors teach students how to pass a road test every day and that's what they do and they can identify the um, the weaknesses in your driving and say listen you need to improve this or you need to work on that so that's the other thing that I recommend in terms of going for a road test if you think you're close go do a mock road test with a local uh, driving school and they'll be able to identify anything that needs to be improved for the purposes of passing a road test and being successful okay uh, da -da -da, style you don't have to buy the tall pylons the one the 36 inch one meter tall pylon style you can rent those from a local rental shop any place that rents construction equipment or other stuff and whatnot i mean uh the one on vancouver island that i use is called rich lock the one here in town uh, trying to think of the name of it i can't think of the rental shop here but any one of those rental shops will be able to sell those 36 inch one meter tall pylons you don't have to buy them they're only about 10 bucks for a day and you can rent four of them okay uh ibrahim i am going to do my road test in october how can i pass okay ibrahim uh there's four basic components for any road test regardless of class regardless of where you're taking your road test in the world the four base the four fundamental components of any road test speed management space management observation and communication those are the four fundamental components that you have to have in place for the purposes of a road test speed management 
posted speed limit, flow of the traffic, the capability of the vehicle. So if you've got a bigger vehicle and it won't go uphill at this posted speed limit, then that's as fast as you can go. But whichever one is, whichever one of those speeds is less is how fast you go. So the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic. The next one is space management. Don't get near any fixed objects. Don't get near other road users. And also as well, have a look here on the channel about how far you need to be away from pedestrians who are crossing. So for example, you come up to an intersection, you're going to make a right-hand turn. Pedestrians are crossing. You need one lane of space between you and the pedestrians before you can turn right. So if it's two lanes... The pedestrian needs to be at the center of the road before you can proceed because you need one lane of buffer of space before you can turn. So that's space management. Don't get near anything. Don't get near fixed objects. Don't if you if you get into a traffic situation where you can't you don't know what's going to happen, simply stop the vehicle and wait for the traffic situation to clear and then proceed. Okay, don't block intersections and those types of things. Uh, observation you need to be scanning the whole time that you're doing your road test so you need to have a scanning pattern in place looking far down the road looking at your center mirror far down the road instrument panel far down the road both shoulders of the road back inside looking at your wing mirrors and then scanning down the road again so that's your scanning pattern that you need to repeat every 8 to 12 seconds as well anytime you turn anytime you move the vehicle laterally you have to shoulder check so that's observation. Uh, and as well, you have to communicate with other road users. And the ways that you communicate with other road users is your lights, your horn, uh, hand gestures, appropriate hand gestures. Don't tell other drivers they're number one. You won't pass a road test. And uh, the position of your vehicle on the roadway will communicate to other road users what you're doing. And you have to be predictable. So those are the four fundamental components for you to be successful on a road test anywhere in the world, regardless of class of license. Okay. So that's how you do that. <laughs> yeah, Flana driving. I've been drinking for 40 years. Uh, <laughs> you probably wouldn't be in any shape to be driving. That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> Ashimer, can you still go to a driving school after getting your driver license? Of course you can. If you got money, Ashimer, driving schools more than love you. And actually, you know, it's really beneficial to go to a driving school, especially if you get a decent driving instructor that's able to adapt some of them aren't able to attack some driving instructors are not able to adapt some of them are so stuck in that mode of teaching you how to pass a road test and oh my god these are the road rules and this is what you need to do uh you need to get a driving instructor that's able to adapt to that and say okay you've already got a, a driving license so what i'm going to teach you is what i would teach you is how to be predictable on the road because i am convinced that there's a culture there's a set of road rules that defines a driving culture and as long as you're working within that driving culture and you're going to be predictable you're going to stay out of trouble and what i say for driving culture is is that we don't stop at stop signs very few drivers who have a driver's license actually come to a complete stop at a, at a stop sign but as long as you're observing and scanning at the intersection and you only proceed after it's clear most Drivers, after they get a, ro a license, for example, drive the speed, the flow of traffic. They don't, they don't do the posted speed limit. If you do the posted speed limit and you're out in the left-hand lane, the fast lane, the hammer lane, you're going to get run over. So that's the thing that I suggest to you if you go to a driving school to get some tips and ideas about how to drive after you get your license. That's what you need. Okay. <laughs> Michael, what about that? I missed the conversation there. <laughs> yeah, there's Sam. Uh, so Rick is right. Us driving instructors teach how to pass the road test. I always give my students points every time they do something wrong. That way they know what it's like on a road test. So that's exactly it. That's what we do as driving instructors. We teach you how to pass a road test. We give you the skills, techniques, and abilities and knowledge that you need to be successful on a road test. Because driving, being able to drive the vehicle and pass a road test. Those are two different animals, okay? <laughs> Abdu, we love you, Rick. So can you give us a quick advice on driving in the snow? Yes, we were gonna talk about the snow, right? Now, driving in snow, it's important that you manage your speed and your space. It's more important when you're driving in the snow to manage your space because you need to be able to stop the vehicle and not crash into the cars in front of you, all right? If it is snowing and you suspect that it's slippery, get your foot on the throttle, okay? Keep your foot on the throttle. Do not use the cruise control if, if conditions are questionable at all. Look far down the road, figure out where other traffic is, and 
what their movements are and know that you want to use very deft that that's the word i'm looking for yes light touch on the steering wheel you don't want aggressive movements and it becomes more imperative when you're on ice and snow and slippery conditions because if you jerk the steering wheel you're going to lose traction and the vehicle is going to slip and slide and go off okay because know that road surfaces can be 10 times more slippery on snow and ice so it's very so lots of space between you and the other road users the other vehicles and traffic and those types of things uh, the other thing is is when you're coming up to an intersection test your braking before you get to where you want to stop okay so slow down back from the intersection slow down to the speed you want and then creep up to the intersection that way when you get to the intersection where you actually want to stop you know you're going to stop because you've already reduced most of your speed so those are key things okay the other thing you want to do in the winter time is make sure you got your windshield washer fluid topped up okay because there's lots of spray and mud and yuck and gross and sand and all that stuff coming off the roadway that's going to block your vision uh, have a look here on the video on the chipped windshield. <laughs> You'll see my vehicle when I came back between uh, Merritt and Kamloops. My vehicle was just covered in salt spray and whatnot. So, <laughs> style, you like my Spider-Man cup? Yes, I was going to change it up this week but and, and show you my other collection of Disney cups that I have in Marvel Comics and whatnot. Yeah, Spider-Man is my son and and my one of my favorite superheroes, you know, next to Batman. Because, I mean, Batman and Spider-Man are just the coolest. Uh, Raquel, uh, snow tires or all season riders? Uh, Raquel, if you have a lot of snow, if you're driving in a lot of snow, I would recommend snow tires. Uh, all season tires will get you through, but they're just not as good as snow tires. They're much, much better. Uh, Arlie, my road test is tomorrow. Any before tips? Yes, get some sleep. Have a good breakfast. Remember to breathe. <laughs> uh, make sure you do a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle in the morning before you go for your road test. Make sure the lights work, the horn, the seat belts, the doors, those types of things because you don't want to be denied your road test because something isn't there in terms of your pre-trip inspection. Uh, make sure you have identification, you got money to show up at the test center and those types of things and just you know go for a little drive in the morning. Not too stressed. Are you going with the driving school, Arlie, or are you go taking your own vehicle? Uh, just let me know that. Uh, Alicia, how much can you slow down? Uh, it it it's, that's a tough question, Alicia, for me to answer because it depends on the conditions of the roadway. I mean, you can obviously slow down. For example, uh, Wednesday night when I drove to Vancouver Island, I mean, it was pouring rain, and there were a lot of people who were not doing the speed limit. I mean, the speed limit on uh, the Trans Canada Highway between here and Vancouver is 120 kilometers an hour. Most people were doing 100 because. Uh, there was just so much water on the roadway that uh, the vehicle was hydroplaning a lot. And so you can slow down, okay? Fred Flintstone, don't drive there in wintertime. <laughs> don't drive. Don't drive where in the wintertime? Uh, Saad, what tires are good for hot climates? Thanks in advance. Uh, Saad, I am... I am a fan of Michelin. I really, really like Michelin tires. Now, somebody else might have... Uh, some comments for you in terms of what tires work best in hot climates and for those of you looking at the replay here uh, you could also leave a comment for Saad about uh, tires that work well in uh, hot climates but most of the time uh, good quality tires will work well in uh, hot climates so um, and there might actually if you just google a little bit it might it might work out soda my apologies <laughs> the capital A through me that's what it was okay my apologies so soda uh yeah but michelins i would check out the michelins and uh just and the other thing i would suggest is just to call a tire shop they might be able to give you some more information than what i'm able to give you okay arlie my driving instructor is taking me i don't have a car of my own yep uh extra lessons from family members all great tips thank you not a problem uh, Arlie, just make sure that in the morning when the driving instructor comes to pick you up, just ask him or her whether they he or she did a pre-trip inspection to make sure all the lights are working and that sort of thing, right? Because if it's just a brake light, it's pretty easy to fix. So that's just what I just what I suggest. Okay. Uh, Gordon, I've noticed the brakes on my car are squeaking a bit. Is this a major concern? Uh, no, you just got some dirt in your rotors on the front of your vehicle on your disc brakes, Gordon. It's not a huge concern. If you have it concerned, a lot of these brake shops, Midas and whatnot here in Canada, will do a free brake inspection for you. Now, just know that... <laughs> 
Uh, I have a bit of a conspiracy theory in terms of that. They're simply trying to get you in so they can do a brake job on your vehicle. But, I mean, you could, ha you could have somebody have a look at it for you. Ashmer, what happens if a person accidentally forgets their driver's license but has insurance and registration in the car? Um, Ashmer, I think it, depend it depends on the officer. There's some discretion with that. Uh, they may let you go and get your license and then bring it to the police station to show that in fact you do have a uh, a driver's license or they might fine you it's up to the discretion of the police officer now what i would suggest to you is be nice to the police officer the police officer he or she w are more lenient if you don't first of all do not deny what you did <laughs> and second of all uh you know just say listen i don't have my driver's license here's the insurance for the car and here's the registration i have a driver's license uh i could bring it down to the police station or whatnot you know just ask them okay but for the most part try and bring your driver's license with you at all times all right uh i'll tell you a story about that one night i forgot my driver's license and i got pulled over for speeding through town on the way to my mom's my mom laughed hysterically when i told her that i got pulled over by the police and got a speeding ticket but at the time i knew my driver's license number because i was a commercial driver and we had to put it on uh the logbook sheets all the time so i had it memorized so i told him what it was and then he came back and kind of gave me a little speech because i was a driving instructor getting a speeding ticket so there you go <laughs> uh style how long is the test will they trick me to see what i know no style there as a rule driving and examiners do not trick you they simply want to know that you have due care and control of the vehicle at all times in changing traffic situations. So for the most part, they're not going to try and trick you. It's pretty much laid out that, you know, you're going to drive around in an urban area. You're going to be on residential streets, multi-lane roads. You're going to do the slow speed maneuvers. You're going to reverse stall park. You're going to parallel park. Uh, Two-point reverse turn. Those are the most common. Three-point turn, you might do that. You might do something else. But for the most part, uh, driving examiners are not going to trick you okay uh jazz raj I, I apologize if i didn't say that correct do you need to check the battery voltage before it snows as temperature cools uh you can get your battery checked and i would suggest if you have any concerns at all about your battery you think that it's old maybe it's eight or ten years old uh you might want to get it checked just because uh you don't want to uh, end up with a dead battery in the morning and your vehicle won't start and just for those of you as new drivers may or may not know, uh, if you get a dead battery and you don't have a boost or you don't have jumper cables, most taxi companies will give you a boost. You can call the taxi company, they will go and give you a boost. Uh, if you don't have um, roadside assistance by BCAA or uh, CAA, which is Canadian Automotive As uh, Association, or the AAA in the United States, the American, uh, the Automobile Association of America. I think that's correct. Sam might be able to correct me on that. Uh, if you don't have roadside assistance, then you can call the local taxi company and they will come out and I think it's 15 or $20 for a boost, okay? And maybe that's the other thing I'll do is uh, do a video on how to boost your vehicle. If you have a newer vehicle that's full of electronics, uh, I might caution you on doing uh, uh, jumping the battery yourself because you could potentially damage uh, the electronic components in your vehicle in the wintertime. So I would just suggest that you uh, maybe have a look in your owner's manual before you boost it just to make sure that you, it's okay to do it and whatnot. Okay, Soda says, and just take it easy with the speed. Yes, make sure that you stay to the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. You cannot, you can, you can exceed the speed limit a little bit, like two, three miles an hour, or you know maybe five kilometers an hour for a very short period of time. But you need to demonstrate to the driving examiner that you have due care of the vehicle because. You are paying attention to your speed and you notice that your speed is not within keeping of the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic and you brought it down almost immediately okay if you're speeding five kilometers ten kilometers an hour above the speed limit and you do that for a minute that's an automatic fail because you're demonstrating because the key component of a road test is that you have due care and control of the vehicle at all times uh, the other thing about those taking road tests this week school is in session okay so 
do know where the school zones are in and around the test center where you're taking your license. And I cannot stress that enough because if you speed in a school zone, for those of you in the States, it'll be 20 miles an hour. For those of us in Canada here, it's 30 kilometers an hour. And if you speed in a school zone, that is in fact an automatic fail on a road test, all right? Okay, so Sam says I use AAA for my roadside assistance here in the States, yes. And uh, Sam, is it the Automobile Association of America or is the American Automobile Association? I'm not sure which one that is. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since I looked that up. Uh, style, if I can't make a left-hand turn while green, can I go when it's yellow and traffic is clearing before I have to wait again? Or will they fail me since I went on a yellow light? Uh, if you're in the intersection style and you're committed and it turns yellow and you're in the intersection, then you need to go. You need to clear the intersection. And do know that you own the intersection uh, when you're in it. So you can go, okay? Just make sure that the other traffic, the oncoming traffic, make sure for certain that it is stopped before you proceed. But know that if you're in their intersection, uh, that you you can you can go on a yellow, okay? Clear the intersection. If you're unsure, so for example, it's an advanced green, and you get out into the intersection, uh, just know that, just try and figure out whether it's fresh or not, okay? Whether you proceed up into the intersection and whatnot, okay? Rupert, uh, how are you? I'm, I'm awesome, mate, yourself. <laughs> How can you position your feet when driving? For instance, do you use the tip of your toes or the side of your shoes? Uh, you know, I've noticed since I did the manual transmission videos in my vehicle that because of the position of my throttle and my brake in my Honda, I noticed that when I use the brake, I use the edge of my foot. I use the uh, right, yes, the right edge of my foot. And when I use the throttle, I use the ball of my foot. So it kind of depends. Sometimes the position of your pedals in the vehicle, the style of vehicle that you have, will determine how you use the your feet on the pedals. But for the most time, most part, it's just the ball of your foot if it's on the clutch or the throttle or whatnot. <coughs> Corey. In the previous vid, we were talking about tapping the brakes and mentioned when tapping the brakes is good so long as you only do it when warranted. Otherwise, you might inspire road rage. And say, yes, uh, unwarranted brake tapping. Doing it at every intersection would be unwarranted brake tapping. So basically what you want to do for brake tapping is the reason that you do it is just to flash the brake lights to get the attention of drivers behind you. And that would be in the case that somebody is tailgating you and you're going to come to a stop to make a turn or execute execute some other maneuver and you want to get their attention that's when you would tap the brakes just to say hey i'm slowing down here and i'm going to make a turn so just know that and please back off all right so that would be when uh peaches can i drive my by myself with my permit if i use the hazard lights until i learn how to drive uh no you cannot peaches you cannot. If you have a learner's permit, you have to have a veteran driver in the vehicle with you to mentor you. Okay? So you can't. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, Miss Might, how much will insurance? Unfortunately, that's a question that you'll have to ask the insurance company, uh, Miss Might, because I, I just simply can't answer that because there's just too many variables uh, to give you any kind of information about that. Uh, Gordon, what are some of the best tips for maintaining a 10 year old Ford 500? There's a lot of miles on it. Change the oil regularly every 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers. That's probably the most important. Keep your fluids topped up, keep track of it in terms of maintenance. Uh, look in your owner's manual, or if you don't have an owner's manual, Gordon, then look online for a maintenance schedule for a Ford 500, and that will give you some idea of some of the things that you can do. If you can just keep it sort of maintained. In terms but keep the oil change for sure that will really help out and you know don't drive it rough because it's an old car <laughs> it's kind of like my honda right i drove it hard and i broke it <laughs> all right a soda weird tip i was told that if you don't go over the speed limit a little bit that the police look at you like you're slightly guilty of something is that true <laughs> I love the, the scream there. That's awesome, Soda. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I don't, no, I don't, I can't, can't say that I have ever heard that before. But I would recommend that after you get your license that you do drive with the traffic flow. But as well, keep a good space between you and the other vehicles. Uh, the th the, one of the things that I advocate 
uh, in terms of defensive driving is always try and drive in the spaces between the cluster of vehicles. Because if you notice vehicles going down the highway, there's a big cluster of vehicles and then there's way back, there's another cluster of vehicles. You wanna drive in the spaces between the clusters of vehicles, okay? And that's a really good defensive move. And as well, it'll help you keep the vehicle on cruise, which you want to do because, you know, we're lazy truck drivers and we like being on cruise and just, you know, listening to good music while we're going down the road. Okay, Arlie. Is it highly likely the driving instructor will take you to an intersection? Where'd you go? For the exam. Arlie, are you asking me whether it's a particular kind of intersection? I'm not following that. American Automobile Association. There we go. Yes, American comes first. <laughs> You're welcome, Corey. Uh, style, when I tap the brakes, do I have to press the gas again or will my crew car? No, uh, no, Style, when you tap the brakes... Uh, you're probably going to be slowing down and braking at that point. That's what you're doing. You're simply tapping to flash the brake lights on the back of the car to get the attention of the vehicle or driver behind you that would be tailgating. Uh, Ashmer, can I drive a motorcycle by myself with a motorcycle learner's permit? Where are you, Ashmer? Okay, just let me know that. Bricks for wheels. Press resume on your cruise controls. Yes. Okay, Matthew. Great learning tool for new merging mania is awesome. <laughs> My pet peeves in California lane changers, multi crossing, bad habits learned from other drivers. No, actually, no, uh, Matthew, that's not. Um, you can cross multiple lanes. Uh, just when you cross multiple lanes, what you need to do is you need to keep your signal on. Don't turn your signal off between lanes and simply pause momentarily in the lane. So you move from one lane to the next lane. Pause for two or three seconds, have a look, make sure it's all good, and then change lanes to the next one. Because sometimes you have to do that. It's just you cannot get away from it. I do it all the time. Well, I don't do it all the time, but you know, when I'm driving in Vancouver, uh, you gotta cross one or two lanes and you gotta cross multi lanes. So just keep your signal on all the time to indicate to other traffic. And when you get into the next lane, just pause two or three seconds, have another look, make sure it's clear, look again, shoulder check, and then move over. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, Ratched, uh, I am just get my permit CDL class in New York, which is the best school I have to take for road test. Uh, Ratched, Ratched, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, what you can do and where I would start in terms of looking for a driving school, because I suspect that that's the question you're asking me is, uh, you're looking for a driving school to teach you for your class, your CDL permit. Yes, it is class one I'm suspecting. Uh, ask questions, okay, and try and talk to the students who are already there and have taken driver's license lessons with them. And their first stop would be Google review because they'll have Google. So uh, look at that and uh, ask them questions too. What kind of equipment do they have? What kind of training do they have? Uh, are the personnel nice in the office? Those types of things. All those uh, questions will give you some indication of the type of driving school that you're at. As well, ask them for a curriculum, okay? And, and that way you'll know exactly what you're doing. All right, Arlie, so I'm from New York. What kind of environment will they be taking me for the exam tomorrow? Arlie, are you in New York State or are you in New York City? Okay. <laughs> Soda, I'm guilty of crossing multiple lanes going straight through. Uh, not straight through an intersection, I hope. Soda, I hope not, okay. Uh, Okay, yum yums. What if I purposely spill oil on the road dur and during the test I show off my driving skills on it? Will I get points? <laughs> oh, yum yum, you're funny. You're so funny. While you're playing Pokemon, you're doing all that other stuff, no doubt. There we go. Uh, Rupert, when coming to a stop for a left turn, is it better to stop near the middle of the intersection or on the front crosswalk line? My driving instructor says I should stop in the middle of the intersection. Well, as I've said before, Rupert, that is open to a degree of interpretation. There's two schools of thoughts. One is to get up into the intersection as move as many cars through the intersection as possible. Uh, I don't concur with that because 40% of crashes occur in intersections. And I suggest, my thing is, is that if you're not in the intersection, you're not going to get run into. 
So I advocate putting the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line and other driving instructors will disagree with me because it's about getting as many cars through. Uh, I don't find that. So my method is what I advocate because it's more defensive than the other one, but I can see the other point too. So that's the other school of thinking and it's really up to your personal preference about which one you think is a better one, okay? Uh, Boston, what are the most common reasons why people fail their new driver's license road test in BC? Most common reasons, uh, dangerous action, uh, they misjudge gap, they speed on a road test, uh, and they just simply overall demonstrate that they do not have due care and control of the vehicle and cannot predict traffic uh, and respond accordingly to changing traffic as they're driving. So if all of that's happening, and as I've talked to driving examiners before and repeatedly, and driving examiners say the same thing over and over again, most people who fail a road test, it's not simply one thing that causes them to pass a road test. It's a series of little things. They simply do not demonstrate that they have due care and control of the vehicle, and that's why they're unsuccessful on a road test, regardless of where they are in the world. Uh, okay, Arlie, any other tips for parallel parking? Yes, go slow, because if you go slow, you got time to adjust and time to observe. And if you go slow and you touch the curb, you're not gonna bang the curb because I've had this discussion before and I have people, especially in Massachusetts, I've had a couple of comments of late, which uh, unfortunately I feel badly for people who are unsuccessful. They, they say to me, well, I bang the curb and it's an automatic fail. Yes, if you bang the curb and the body of the vehicle rocks on the chassis, yes, that's an automatic fail. If you dump the tire up over the curb, that's an automatic fail in a parallel park. If you simply just touch the curb and then you pull forward and adjust, what you're showing the examiner is that you have due care and control of the vehicle. You know where the vehicle is in space and place. You know that you touched the curb and you move forward and adjusted the vehicle. That should not be, in most cases, should not be a fail on a road test, okay? So know that. So go slow. Ashimer, should you stop on a amber light? If you can, amber, or sorry, amber light. Ashimer, if you can, you should stop, okay? You should. Know that no vehicle, regardless of class of license or how big it is, will stop in its own length. So if you're farther back than one vehicle length from the intersection, you should try and bring the vehicle to a stop. Sometimes you won't be able to, other times you can. But I do recommend that if you can, then you should. Okay, soda. In Nevada, it's completely legal to dedicate to an intersection, but if you do it on a test, they'll dock you. So dumb. <laughs> So when you say soda, when you say dedicate to an intersection, do you mean into the intersection in preparation for making a left-hand turn? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, how come people don't create space while merging on the highway? I feel like you have to just push your car in because people think if they're already on, they don't have to move. Okay, one of the things I recommend style is, is that you signal early because if you ask people that you want to merge, oftentimes they will accommodate you. And as well, it's a presence of mind. If you think, I'm just going to come down the on-ramp, hit the acceleration lane, I'm gonna match the flow, the speed of the flow of traffic, signal early, people will move over. Uh, I've done merges where it's like bumper to bumper, you signal, you pick your spot, and you're going. You just, I'm gonna merge. It's, <laughs> you just gotta do it, all right? Uh, so to, yes, you're talking about, yeah, dedicated into the intersection. Okay, so that's what you're talking about. So they don't want you to do that on a road test. Is that what you're saying? So they want you to stay with the steer tires on the front crosswalk line so you're not in the intersection. Is, is that correct? Uh, if it's bad weather during the test, will they be more understanding? Yes, they will. Okay, they will. You can reduce your speed if the weather is not good for the purposes of your road test, okay? All right, what advice do you have on perspective when in the driver's seat when doing slow speed maneuvers? Okay, Rupert, go slow. Okay, that's that's the most important thing because if you go slow, you've got time to work the controls, you've got time to observe, you've got time to correct. So go slow for the purpose of doing slow speed maneuvers. And as well, practice with those one meter tall, 36 inch uh, pylons in a parking lot and get comfortable with where your space where your vehicle is in space and place that's one of the most important things all right 
Uh, yum yums. I'm 18 and I have my license for two years. Can I drive my friend's car? Will my insurance mind? Uh, it's not your insurance, yum yums. That's the issue. It's your friend's insurance on the vehicle. They may have insurance that prohibits you from driving because a lot of insurance for vehicles, uh, you have to have a certain amount of experience before you can drive others other people's vehicles and be covered by the insurance. So just know that. Okay. Soda. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, there's probably a reason behind that soda. The reason that they do that is because of the high crash rate at intersections and novice drivers are just not as aware and we've talked about this before in terms of hazard perception and their uh, low ability to judge gap correctly so what they're doing is, is they don't want you to move into the intersection as part of a defensive move and just while you gain skills that you need to make uh, left hand turn successful so that's what they're doing okay let's see Corey, over in Winnipeg, they start the test parallel parking. So most who would fail, fail immediately, including me the first time. I guess it's to save time for the testers. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has to do with the culture of driving centers too. Different driving centers do different things. For example, uh, the test in Vernon here for the class one, uh, the first thing they make you do is do a pre-trip inspection and sometimes they'll make you hook and unhook. Whereas when I was doing the test in Victoria, the last thing you did was hook and unhook because if you weren't successful on the road test, they didn't make you hook and unhook because there was no point you doing it at that point. So that was one of the things. So different places uh, have different cultures and do the test in different orders and those types of things. The other thing, Corey, uh, they probably did it right there in the parking lot. Did they not in terms of the parallel parking? Ashimer, I hit the curb twice on my road test and the driver examiner passed me. Uh, okay, Ashmer, did you hit the curb or did you bump the curb? Did you just touch the curb? I just answered that question. Okay. Style. Okay. <laughs> All right. The examiners are scared. Yes, the examiners are scared because they're in vehicles with inexperienced drivers all the time. So, yes. What do I have to know for the pre-exam before the road tests? Uh, there isn't anything you need to know for the pre-exam. You just need to make sure that the car, the, the car is fit to go down. All the lights are working. The primary controls are working. The door, the seatbelt, those types of things. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Ashmer, you bumped the curb. So see, that's acceptable because you knew you bumped the curb and then you corrected, right? You didn't hit the curb where the body rocked over the chassis like this because if that happens, then you didn't bump the curb. You hit the curb. And there's a difference between hitting the curb and bumping the curb. All right. So a couple of tips. The other thing uh, I was talking about, I got a video on how to drive in the rain and I was mentioning a couple of times here uh, that... The other night when I drove down to Vancouver Island, it was pouring rain and the vehicle was hydroplaning. And for those of you who haven't experienced hydroplaning, it's kind of a weird, uh, kind of a weird feeling on the front end of the vehicle on a front, a front wheel drive vehicle. It's probably even more weird in a rear wheel drive vehicle. And if you've ever experienced uh, hydroplaning, leave a comment down in the comment section there and just let us know about your experience with hydroplaning. And for those of you watching the replay, same thing, leave a comment down in the comment section about your experience with hydroplaning. Because even though I have really good tires on my Honda, uh, I was still hydroplaning because there was so much water on the road when I was driving to Vancouver uh, to catch the ferry at Tawas. And one of the things I had to do was I had to get the vehicle out of the ruts. And so I had the left tire on the center line of the road. There wasn't much traffic on the road. so. Uh, just to because a couple of times I hit that those puddles and it starts to hydroplane and basically what you got to do is just take your foot out of the throttle and it'll settle down and it'll carry on again but it's a bit daunting the first couple of times it happens when you're not really sure what's happening but just know that there's a lot of rain and especially if you don't have good quality tires on your vehicle it's going to be more apt to hydroplane when driving in the rain so know all of that okay Rupert, I love driving in the rain. I love driving in the rain too. I think it's great. But there's a happy medium about a little bit of rain <laughs> and a lot of rain. This was a lot of rain. 
Can you turn on one-way streets? Uh, style not following that question in terms of turning on one-way streets. Are you talking about a one-way street to another one-way street? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, Boston will have a higher chance of passing a new driver's road test if it take a driving school's Prius versus my own car. Uh, Boston, you might. What is, what is your vehicle versus a Prius? Just let me know what you're driving in terms of your own personal vehicle because that'll be able to answer my question. And for those of you watching the video on the replay, just let me know what kind of vehicle you're driving for the road test or whether uh, you are taking a the driving school's car and the reasons why you might be taking the driving school car as opposed to your own vehicle. Just leave a comment down in the comment section there and let us know that for those of you watching the video on the replay. Okay. Arlie, is the phone allowed in the car while taking the exam? Uh, definitively, no. No, 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 no. Take your phone and put it in the trunk, okay? Put it somewhere else. Give it to your mom. Give it to your driving instructor. Give it to somebody else. Do not have it in the car, okay? It's just too much of a distraction. It's too much of a temptation. Just put it away somewhere, <laughs> all right? Okay. Uh, ways where to accommodate pedestrians compulsory yes you must accommodate pedestrians if you're in Canada taking a road test yes miss might I'm so happy I moved to Florida no parallel parking what do you mean there's no parallel parking in Florida <laughs> uh, where did I pick up the tech the jig jaw technique uh, I don't know I invented it let's just say I invented it I invented the jig jog <laughs> Okay, Abdu, when you want to turn left at a flashing yellow light, do I need to proceed into the intersection or do you need to wait be behind the line until the front car clears the intersection? Uh, Abdu, do you have a license or are you going for a road test? Answer that question. Sam, another tip. If you wear glasses and it says it on the back of your permit card, make sure you bring them because they will not let you take the road test unless you're wearing contact lenses. Exactly. That is an excellent point on Sam's that Sam has made. If you wear glasses, prescription glasses, or you have contacts, and it says so on your license that it is a condition of you driving and you come for your road test, you have to have your glasses. If you don't have your glasses, they're not going to let you take your road test because they're not going to drive with a blind person. <laughs> Okay, so bring your prescription glasses. And as well, if it's really sunny and you are really photosensitive like I am, bring sunglasses because I don't, I, I would, if I was a driving, I know that some driving instructors are like, no, you can't wear sunglasses. And they'll chew you out. I am completely opposite. If you need sunglasses and you are really sensitive to the sun, then wear sunglasses. As I would rather have somebody wearing sunglasses than squinting while trying to drive because I know that it's painful for me to drive if I don't wear sunglasses on sunny days. So if you need sunglasses, bring those too. Okay. <laughs> you think it should be great. That's awesome. And Sam says they will check if you were wearing contacts. Oh, they're going to look deeply into your eyes. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, in Florida and Maryland. They do do parallel parking on a road test. Ashimer, where is that information? Can you, is that in their driver's manual that they don't make you do that? Because I would be interested to have that information. And if anybody watching on the replay can give me a source for that about Florida and Maryland don't make you parallel park, uh, I would be interested to have that information. And that way we can get that out to smart drivers. And those smart drivers that are taking their road test in Maryland and Florida know that they don't have to parallel park. So but we just need to confirm that information. That's all. It's kind of like being a newspaper reporter. You saw that movie where the woman ended up in jail because her source was a little kid. Yeah, we don't want to have that happen. Okay, and Sam agrees with me. If you need to wear sunglasses, wear sunglasses. That's really great. Okay, Abdu. Uh... <laughs> Uh, style. Yes, well, I'm getting old and I have trouble with seeing far away with, uh, especially under fluorescent lights when I'm tired. Yeah, I hear you. Abdu, I have a license, so can I proceed to intersection for left turn with flashing light? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Abdu. If you have a license, you're not going for road test. Just get out in the intersection and try and get as many vehicles through as you can. Okay, Michael, what about the blind person who can use his sense of hearing to tell where everything is? <laughs> Uh, Michael, you're funny. 
Uh, like that, I watched the video. I, somebody was driving with the force. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, Michael, you probably weren't here when I told. I don't. I don't know whether I told that story, but I worked at a hospital teaching people how to drive with hand controls, and there was this native Canadian who showed up, and he was learning how to drive. He was an amputee above both knees, so he didn't have any feet. And uh, he he said to me after a couple lessons, he says he points to his old beat up Chevy van. Uh, behind him there and he says oh i'm really glad i'm getting these driving lessons and getting hand controls installed in my van he says i've been driving with a broomstick for two years <laughs> so i don't know how, if if that's up there on the same level as um, you know people that don't see well who are driving so there you go uh Rachid, if i pass the pre-trip inspection and i failed the road test and for next time i have to take the pre-trip again thank you uh okay no, unfortunately, if you fail the pre-trip inspection, oftentimes you have to do the whole road test again. Uh, the the air brake part of it, they might let you do the air brake alone, but oftentimes if you fail the pre-trip, they make you do the whole test again. Okay, uh, VM Gaming, taking the road test, real eager, nervous. Yes, you're going to be great. Just remember to breathe, take your time, and you know know the four major components of a road test. And just look earlier in the video on the replay there, and uh, there's an explanation of that. Uh, also, in the eight tips for passing your road test, uh, speed management, space management, observation, and communication. Those are the four uh, fundamental components for the purposes of a road test. Okay, and we are near the one hour mark, so we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, Andrew, do you recommend Mazdas in terms of reliability? I think, yeah, I think Mazdas are okay. Uh, Andrew, I don't think you're going to have too much problem with that. Uh, you might just want to have a look at some of the uh, consumer guides and see what the rating is in terms of Mazdas and the particular model that you're thinking about or looking at. And uh, those will be able to give you a bit more information. Uh, pretty easy to find on Google and those types of things. Okay. Style, if he can drive with no feet, I can definitely get my driver's license. I need to stop it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Style, yes. You got to embrace Nike. Put your Nike shoes on. You know what Nike says. Just do it, right? When they, they borrowed that from Eastern philosophy where they say no thoughts of losing, no thoughts of winning, just total commitment. You got to get in there. You got to commit. You got to be in the game. You got to be in to win. You're going to win. So visualize success. <laughs> How many chances? Oh, they just, they, they never kick you out. They just want you coming back. So keep going. <laughs> Soda. Oh my God. You're a Jeep person. <laughs> rank everyone. That's funny. Excellent. After party. What can I expect for my first road test with a work employer? Uh, basically, they're going to take you for a ride around the block. They're going to make sure that you can do a pre-trip inspection and they're going to make sure that you're safe and predictable. They're not going to do anything, uh, you know, anything crazy. They might want you to learn. Uh, no, they want to see that you can back up the vehicle and those types of things. But other than that, they're, that's basically what you're going to have uh, after party. Uh, and as well, just leave a comment down in the comment section there and, and uh, I can give you a bit more information if you want some more information about that. Andrew, uh, it depends. If you have a lot of snow, Andrew, I recommend putting winter tires on your vehicle. If you don't have a lot of snow, then you know you get a couple, two, three snowfalls a year. Then all seasons are gonna do what you need them to do. Okay. <laughs> if you eat, oh yum yums, and, and don't forget playing Pokemon in your in your low rider there, <laughs> Boston. Uh, BMW is the car. Okay, so you're as opposed to a BMW. Yeah, I might suggest you, you use the Prius. That just might help you out. Okay. 90 degree parking. Uh, reverse stall parking, Abdu, is the one you're looking for. How to reverse stall park, how to bay park. It's already there. Uh, style, Jeep Wrangler. want that or a G-Wagon, but I don't want, I don't, won't get either if I don't get this. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There you go. Ashimer, do you shift into neutral? No, you don't shift into neutral. You just take your foot off the throttle. As soon as you take your foot off the throttle, it'll just settle down, okay? Especially if you've got decent tires on your vehicle, that'll be fine in terms of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of coping with uh, hydroplaning. <laughs> I hardly get to do anything. 
All right, we're going to leave it there. We're going to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up, for your questions, for your time. And for those of you watching on the replay, leave a comment down in the comment section there. Hit that like button if you like the video, you like the questions and answers. And if you have a road test this week, good luck on your road test. To those of you who passed last week and were successful on your road test, congratulations. That's really awesome for all the smart drivers and everybody helping out. That's really brilliant. Okay, and... I have a backup camera. Can't use a backup camera on a road test. Okay, just know that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.